appreciate what you just said. And I, again, I, I tend to agree with what you were mentioning just now <laughs> because people have choices, which was another thing that, that I talked about during Throwback Thursdays today. Yeah. I believe that we all have choices, and in my opinion, other than when there has been some type of horrific situation where somebody has been assaulted, you have a choice to decide if you want to have children yeah, or not. I don't, I'm not knocking her for having the children, because obviously they, they're great, it's a good gift, you know, it's a great gift and everything, but I ain't being funny, she knows she couldn't afford them, and, and if the state wasn't paying, what would she do? Because they would probably be, you know, in a lot more of a bad situation, a bit more destitute or whatever. Because back in the day, that's what used to happen. When they used to have all these children, if they could feed them, you know, a lot of people, they ended up in the workhouse and all sorts of crazy enough stuff. <laughs> well, and, and, and that's, that's the thing where, man, the motives for why a person does something mm. is in, in, in itself one of the most, um, well, it's impossible, really, <laughs> to to know sometimes what why people do what they do. But yeah. when it relates to to work and, and things like that, from the standpoint of, of like even a business owner, I'm a small business owner here in the United States, and mm-hmm. I I encourage people to be able to work from their homes or work See? from their office spaces. And that's because the technology that I use makes it possible for them to do that. But what about the um, employer, the boss, Mm -hmm. that can't get the understanding for the importance of being able to have people work at home because they want to have their workers under their thumb all the time and see everything they're doing. This is when they've got to take into account capability, personality, autonomy you know the the need to get tasks done at different time to, to, for different time zones because if you're trying to be an international business person mm-hmm. you can't just operate nine to five on your time zone and say right that's it we're done because you're going to lose a lot of business and then people will just go somewhere else because i think oh well you said you were international but when i was trying to call your customer services at you know 2 a.m in the morning my time whatever i couldn't get through to nobody so i just gave up and i'm just going to go to another company and that happens. That, I mean, that really happens. Yeah, but the thing is, I'm I'm not saying every, you're going to catch every single customer from every single time zone. But if if the point I'm making is, if if employers were more flexible, they might find that you know, one, the work life balance, they you know, their employees would imp- appreciate that more because they could get to you know spend more time with their family and and things like that. And they'd also get they'd be more productive because if you have a two plus hour commute. And then you do your job. That's not fun. But if you had a 30 second commute from your kitchen, making yourself a cup of coffee or tea to your desk and then you're working. Now, nah, I think most people, if they could, would prefer that. Man, you <laughs> must really be walking slow if it takes you 30 seconds. To get- <laughs> <laughs> well, you know why I say 30 seconds? Because I was on, I think I was on YouTube the other day. And I was, see, when, see it's funny how when you think that when you start thinking about something subconsciously, when you're looking around, because I was looking at something else, and then I came across this video that was advocating working from home, and it, obviously, yes, it was in America. And I tweeted this, guys, just in case, the Ask Avani show, I tweeted it, so you can have a look for it there. But basically, the, the man was saying that, you know, it's a 30-second commute from the kitchen to the desktop in his home, and he, and he was saying, you know, the best commute I ever did. And the reason why I say that, because even today... There's been bus strikes again in the UK. People, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> if you go to work in the city or anywhere else around, you know, the UK, you ain't pleased with all this train mad- madness and all the crazy weather that can sometimes cause your life havoc with the crazy, you know, sometimes the snow. Well, in England, right, look, they complain when a little bit of snow drops and they're telling you, oh, my God, oh, my God, there's loads of snow. We're crazy with the weather over here. The, 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 the Canadians and people like that, they laugh at us because they're like, oh, please, that's nothing. <laughs> well, but what's, that's what's a little snow. bit of snow to you? Well, it, it doesn't even cover your shoe. 
I mean, okay, okay, that is you know, a little bit. And, and then they're having palpitations about it and saying, oh, you know, oh, God, the trains are going to be... And the thing is, the trains over here are a mess anyway. Because every morning, you don't know what to expect when you get on the platform. Like I said, I know because I've done it. I've been working in the city for many years and it wasn't fun. You, and it's cold. So when it's cold now and you're standing on the platform and you're waiting for the first train to take you to work, you've got to give yourself time because not, nine times out of ten, the first train that you want is going to be either cancelled or delayed. So then you're like, oh, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm in trouble because <laughs> you're waiting for the next the weather? one. Uh? Is that because of the weather? Well, sometimes it's because of the weather, and sometimes it's because the trains are just crap. <laughs> it's just <laughs> the final time, you know. So that either the train is late, or like I said, it's been delayed, or it's late, delayed, or it's it's cancelled. And then you're like, oh, oh, I'm in trouble because I'm waiting for the next one. The next one now is probably going to be late as well because it's, you know, knock on effect. And then that one might not even stop because they're so crowded that they say, oh, no, for safety reasons, this train will not be stopping at the station. And you're just like, oh, what? So that's two trains that you've missed. Okay. You're late. <laughs> is this something that actually happens all the time? Listen, listen it's, 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 it's a frequent occurrence. And I know people in the UK, you know what I'm talking about, so you can call through. <laughs> 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 I'm so much on Radio Skype and you can back me up on this because I know you guys know this is crazy this is the kind of stupidness we have to put up with every day and then if it's not the trains people being on strike or the trains getting cancelled or delayed then it's the buses and you know because today the buses are on strike again <laughs> okay I understand why they're on strike because you know they say that the money they get is not enough and the cost of living is just too crazy and they want more money and they're going to make you feel their pain that's why they're on strike but you know they're, they're, they're inconveniencing other people who are you know because i have to say this the reason another re- another reason why i think a lot of people especially those that live like in them islands and all that that try to commute into work i think they would really appre- appreciate trying to work from home is because have you ever heard of people that get up okay they don't start work till nine o'clock for example but they have to leave their house at like crazy o'clock, four or five in the morning, just <laughs> to get to work on time. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, listen, I'm serious. <laughs> You're laughing. I'm serious. This is what they do. This is the dedication that they have to have in order to keep a job because they can't get a job that's close to them or they can't get a job close to them that pays anywhere near the amount of money that they would need to maintain the lifestyle that they have. So they have to get a job that's even in another city or something. And they've got to do this commute. Every day. I mean, well, they do that too. in the United States. They there are people yeah. that work in the the New York City Manhattan yeah. area, and they live in Connecticut and and the other city, New Jersey. See? You know, which is across the river. But yeah. you know, they do the same thing. Yeah, but then the craziness four or five hours just to get to work. I mean, and then you've got to do a nine, you know, eight, nine, ten hour day, and then you're gonna have to do that same crazy commute to go home. Come on now, if you was in your house. You literally just take a couple of seconds to go from one room to the next room, sit yourself down, do your job, take your break. The, the stress would just be completely obliterated. Well, because you, know, it's, you just can have all that, the plane, the train. <laughs> it's, it's funny that you mentioned that because I noticed an article online and it was about a, a man. And, mm-hmm. and you and I talked about um, the, what's that, the, uh, when somebody has a quick kickstart. Kickstarter oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kickstarter, and things yeah. like that. Well, you yeah. have a, we mentioned also a story about someone that you have yeah. from the uh, UK area that yeah. where something happened with Kickstarter. Well, there basically was an article about a man. Mm-hmm. And this man, you said that people commute for like four hours to get oh, to a job. Right? About. Right. Yeah. This guy basically was commuting and it took him some ridiculous amount of time mm-hmm. to get home I like to get to work because the bus systems had stopped and all mm-hmm. this and it was basically something where it took him like six to eight hours yes. to get home and yes. to get to work see so you know what i mean i can't i think i know it's that guy that um i think he couldn't afford to buy a new car isn't it and well, yeah, he, he had a car. It broke several years that's ago. Right. He couldn't yeah. buy another and one. He, yeah, and he was asking for help to to um, raise money to buy a new car so that he could drive to work. Because otherwise, he's walking and he's getting the bus. And, and the thing is, he has to leave his house. At, he don't start till like 2 o'clock in the afternoon or something ridiculous. And he's leaving his house at 8 o'clock in the morning. Come on now. But that's, th- what I found about that that I thought was interesting was that he was so... Um, basically diligent because he never yeah. missed work he was all he was sick or whatever yeah. but he was so diligent that yeah. 
he all he never missed a day of work. Yeah, but listen, he knows that if he don't turn up, there's someone else hungry waiting to take his job. Even though he knows it's, it's not that great paying, and obviously, I think he likes his job as well. He, you know, he's 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 got a rapport with his with his colleagues, and he's worked there for many years. But some people don't have that, you know, ethic. They have that work ethic as well. So That's whether my point. whether it's next door or whether if you if you're lazy, you're lazy. And if if whether you can work from home or whether you have to take six hours to get to work, if you ain't up for that. You ain't gonna do it. <laughs> you're not even going to think about it. Yeah, you don't care because it's, you you don't have the work ethic. You're not interested. But the thing is, the thing this you see, this is where you're gonna start rooting out the lazy ones now. If there is jobs that start, if the com- if the UK government start encouraging companies to create more jobs for people to work from home, yeah, all them people that are on signing on on benefits that are just lazy. <laughs> if they say to me, okay, we got you a job and you can work from home, if they turn around and they're still coughing and spluttering and giving excuses why they don't want to do it, then you know they are lazy. Because if, if someone says to me, I've got a job for you and you don't even have to leave your house, you think I will be jumping up and down, I will rip their, their arm off. If they said to me, we're going to pay you, the similar sort of thing that you would get if you got left your house and went, you know, travelled to a job, I'll be like, yeah, come on, let's go, I'll do it. <laughs> because that's the I don't thing, leave that's my true. house, that's better. I agree with that point because there are some people that are given opportunities and they don't take advantage of those opportunities. No, because they're lazy. <laughs> and, and I agree. But see, you would be a conservative on some things in the United mm. States uh, okay. because what you're saying, mm. I agree with, first of all, mm-hmm. because I feel that if I have the opportunity to work, yeah, I should work. It. Why would and, you want to sit at home and take benefits? You know that money is ridiculously stupid. You can't live on that. You can't even and you can't even buy food on that. But and some so, people, because they are inactive, lacy, and don't have a drive but, to do it, and I don't mean drive a car. I yeah, mean, I they don't have the drive. <laughs> Um, but you see, then there's a flip side because you see, don't get me wrong. I have compassionate people. Don't worry, I'm not mean. Oh, if I know that. Who's really disabled. <laughs> <laughs> if there's someone who's really disabled and they can't work, then it don't matter whether they're at home or whether they're wherever because they just can't do it. That you know, they physically can't. You know, they can't type or they can't pick up a telephone easily. Right. Then I understand. You know, those are the people that need the benefit system to help them because they are. You know, it's not their fault that they're disabled. Whatever, however dis- severely disabled they are, that's not their fault. You know, but exactly. I'm talking about the people that would rather dodge and duck and dive when they could sit at home. Okay, because with disabled people as well, the reason why I think it would be good for some disabled people that want to work as well. See, I told you already about the trains, yeah, and and how crazy it is. Now, that's for someone me, like an able-bodied person that can walk about. Imagine what it's like trying to get on a train when you're a disabled person and you have to, like, book things in advance and say to them, I need the ramp to be at this station and on this day at this time because I need to get to work. Imagine what it's like having to call, you know, ahead to arrange to get help just so you can get on the train. And then the train is late. Now, if they could work from home, eliminate all that. Because a lot of companies, I noticed over here in the UK as well, they don't like to pay for disabled equipment, whatever it might be. You know, sometimes a disabled person might need things just slightly adapted so they can use it, so they can do right. their job. A lot of companies over here, they don't like to pay for that because it's like, oh, well, why should we pay for Japan for a special mouse? Fine, don't pay that. But if you let them work from home, their, if their, their home is already adapted for them to move around, make a cup of tea, whatever they need to do, isn't it? So all they need is a little bit of tweaking, give them the equipment that they need, they keep it at home. And then also it means that you're not having to help them to get into the office with a ramp and special equipment, special chairs, special table, you know, because if they work from home, the cost of setting them up to do the job is going to be less. Do you see what well, I mean? But you're making sense again, okay? So you know we I'm live trying. in a, a I'm logical to make world. Sense. And people are illogical, <laughs> and businesses are illogical, and in 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 most cases, that logic is based on how much money quote yeah. they can make, yeah. and yeah. even if it would cost them less in the long run because they bring in equipment or they have people work at home, uh-huh. they think bottom line and how much money does it cost, and yeah. I don't think that's fair. I know, I know, and I think. What you're talking about and what you have mentioned, if they listen to the Mm -hmm. Ask Avani show, Mm -hmm. they would change how they're thinking about it. They would change how they run their businesses. I hope I'm passionate enough. I hope I'm giving off the passion to say, please, 
think about these things because these are the kind of things that I'm sure a lot of people, if they could have the voice to say, you know what, I do want to work from home, actually. I have children. I have other things that I need to do. I have family obligation. And it's not happening for me because I'm, I'm killing myself to be at work and, and I'm, I'm knackered. I'm just not, I'm not getting that work-life balance, you know? Definitely. Well, but that's what the show is for. It's so that you can <laughs> yeah, change I get to the tell world. People, you know, you're listening to the Ask of Andy show, people. Um, I, I know you can tell that I get really passionate about stuff. <laughs> 